Okay, so let's get started on today's class. Today I'm going to be talking about noses in three-quarter view, how to paint them, how to think about them, how to change your view and your line-dependent approach, how to shed the symbol. Let's get started, but before I get started, I want to remind you guys that Portrait Studio is on sale. Everything on my store is on sale. Um, and how to submit your work for critique. So if you want your work critiqued, all you have to do is go on to my subreddit. The icon is at the top right of my website, istabrak.com. Click on the subreddit icon right here. There's all these other links for you to enjoy, but click on this one and that'll take you to the subreddit. You can submit everything uh, here. Remember that there are some specific rules to follow. And if you want to get critique, you have to give critique um, or else you're not really going to be noticed. Um, so make sure you guys are providing critique as well. Let's talk about noses in three-quarter view. So let's recap on last time. Last time I talked about noses as a geometric object. So we use that geometric shape that I mentioned last time, which was a very, very simple kind of polygonal shape. All right, so this basic form that I rendered for you guys last time. Three quarter view is not that hard if you make sure you respect your symmetry line. That's it. So three quarter view has a big element to it, which is an invisible element, meaning it's hard to t tell someone about it. Um, uh, rotational right? Is that, did I spell that right? Um, so rotational element is the fact that the nose sticks out towards the camera. The nose travels towards the camera. This is an invisible movement. It's not visible to you from front view. Because this motion is not visible to you from front view, you start relying on symbols because how does an artist with only, like, let's say this is you guys. I'm going to draw a simple anime side view. There you go. How does an artist who only sees things as flat objects imagine the world of three dimensions? They don't, unless they instructed their brain to do so with lots of studies of form and lots of sculpting and lots of three-dimensional substitution for two-dimensional images. So as soon as you start seeing that in that the square is now the cube, so the square is now the cube, you start thinking about that movement towards the camera. It's only if we rotate the object. So see, this is also a three-quarter view cube. Are you guys paying attention? This is a three-quarter view cube. It's just that it's it's rotated in such a way where it we can't see the sides and so we can't imagine it as something three-dimensional. We see it only superficially from where we're standing at in our vantage point. And we only see the square. Just like a cylinder isn't a cylinder until it's rotated. Before it's rotated, it's just a rectangle. It has to be rotated before we can see its curved sides. So when you think about a nose in front view, this is why the symbolic image of a nose, why all those flattened out images of noses over the years have always had these lines because mankind, it looks like a face, uh, mankind is, it finds it very difficult to imagine the Z axis. X, Y, Z. And this Z axis is what, is front and center when doing a three-quarter view nose. And for students who have never, who barely mastered the front view nose, who've never done three-quarter view uh, nose before, who have never done 3D modeling or sculpting, who've never done um, either in digital or real life sculpting, and who've never done form studies, all of a sudden think that they can now start approaching the z-axis, this invisible motion that is not visible to us. Let me tell you why it's not visible to you. And if you pick up anything out of today's class, pick this up. There is no third dimension in your canvas. You have to fake it. Did that blow your mind? 
you have to fake the third dimension. I'm faking the third dimension. It's artificial. I'm just pretending. It really is a two-dimensional world. I can only go side to side and up and down. It's not a 3D modeling program where I can go into the canvas and into this designated digital space that I can move around in and sculpt in and the way we can in real life. I can't do that. There's only two dimensions. So it's not at fault for all those line dependent students who don't know how to escape it. it you don't escape it. You fake it. Okay, you fake the third dimension, write that back. So if you're faking the third dimension, it means you have to prepare to fake it. It means that you have to start drawing three-dimensional objects. So let's get into the tutorial aspect of painting a three-quarter view nose. All right, so I like to keep my um, scribbles up so I can reference them later. So let us get Isterac's scribbles out of the way. Um, Put them over here somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> so let us paint a three-quarter view nose. But first, 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 before we paint the nose, we have to fake the third dimension. It's no longer just a front view nose where a, sim a simple pyramid shape will help us render the nose. It's not like that anymore. Now we have to fake this third dimension. But before we do, we go back to our little buddy, the symmetry line. The symmetry line helps you manage the rotation, keeps the rotation unwarped. When you guys rotate without a knowledge of forms and without a knowledge of the symmetry line, your rotation becomes warped because what are you rotating on? What's the axis you're rotating on? The form is rotating on like a kebab stick toothpick imagine a piece of cheese and the kebab stick or a bamboo stick and you're rotating it does the cube change its shape just because you rotated it over from front view to side view of the cube no but in the mind of an artist who is line dependent who has flat images of shapes in their mind that's a big yes because they don't have any axis of rotation of rotation and they don't have any axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, axis of rotation, both don't exist in the mind of a beginner. You gotta start supplementing those missing elements in your mind with form studies. So let's go back to the to the tutorial. Let's let's actually get into the three-quarter three-quarter view nose structure. So remember that pyramid I drew last time. So this one really, really comes in handy. For front view, that big geometric block that I showed you guys is great. But now let's get into the actual three-quarter view structure diagram. One second. So remember that a diagram helps you remember that missing three-dimensional axis that you have to fake in the two-dimensional world of your canvas. Your canvas is flat. You are investing it with a three, three, you know, a third dimension. So let's start with the flat drawing. Okay, fine, Mr. Rack. So let's start with the flat drawing first. So this is the shape that'll help you figure out any nose, side view, front view, and three quarter view. This is the shape. But it needs to be adjusted because we're no longer painting a front view nose. Front view means that this axis, this axis of symmetry, which is the symmetry line, has a perfect reflection, mirror reflection on either side. That means front view nose, okay? Three quarter view nose is still symmetrical, but not symmetrical to the camera. So what do we do to this triangle? Well, what does it mean to rotate? It means as the face rotated from front view nose to side view nose, something starts disappearing. If you had a big sticker, a big star sticker on top of a ball, and the star started to rotate, would the star just like sit on top of the edge? No, part of the star would disappear with the rotation of the ball. And not just that, it would show how the ball has a lot of curvature on the surface area. So as the nose rotated, parts of the nose started to disappear. 
And so we have to start that on the sub level. We have to start that at the basement. We have to start that at the primitive shapes we use to address that missing three quarter view. Y'all are following me because I'm building blocks right now. Okay. So that means that this far side, Oopsie, one moment. This far side over here got squished, and this front side expanded. Now we are talking about one side disappearing, which is the far side. The nose is rotating this way, by the way. And the same thing if the nose is rotating the other way. And one side got closer to the camera because we're seeing more of one side of the nose than the other. So let us go back to that front view nose for a second. So where are you? Okay. All right, so we're comparing these two. Look at the displacement, look at the changes. This side got squished by this much and this side got expanded by this much. It doesn't matter how much you squish or expand. There is a wiggle room that you're allowed in the world of art where you don't get everything accurately. You didn't rotate at the right degree. You didn't um, uh, move everything exactly as it would in the real world. There, there is a lot of forgiveness when you are painting from memory. As long as you have your edges and your rotation and your axis of symmetry intact. So there's a lot of wiggle room that's allowed. There's no formula for exactly physically on the atomic level um, how much you're supposed to rotate. There's no such thing. There's no one with a camera and the accuracy camera that points it at your drawing and said, hey, this isn't exactly rotated. There's nothing like that. So as long as it's general to the rules and it's close to the rules within the margin of reason uh, that you rotate it. So we're comparing front view to side view, through quarter view. So let's go back to front view. Do you remember that little ball that sits right here after you've drawn the nostrils and everything? That ball is further from the face than the nostrils. So if we saw the nose from the side, the nose does something like this, right? This is a very pronounced nose. Um, the ball of the nose, which is this ball, both are the same, is very far away. If you got your hand and slowly moved it closer to your um, face, it would hit the tip of your nose first, right? The tip of the nose touches your hand first. That means that it's further sticking out. Any object that is sticking out further from the object that it's sourced from will show the rotation first. So, and another example, if you had a ball and a tiny ball in front of it, and then you rotated it, that ball would be somewhere out there. Okay, so it would do something like that. It rotated this way. So now this ball that used to be in the front is now sticking out of the outline depending on the degree that you rotated it. So if we think about this ball tip, and we go back to the three-quarter view example, let me get rid of this. <clears throat> that means we have to displace the ball. It's no longer perfectly center. It can't possibly perf be perfectly center. How could it? Because it was perfectly center when, when the ball was facing forward, when the nose was facing forward. So this nose, the ball of the nose, now has to be rotated over. The nose moved this way. So that means the tip of the nose, which is the furthest from the face, also showing the first signs. It's showing the first symptoms of rotation. Once you find this ball, once you compress this degree and expand this degree, so it's no longer mirror symmetrical, symmetrical only to itself in, in the sense that it's still a symmetrical nose, not symmetrical to the camera. But as soon as you deconstruct the symmetry on the camera level and you've displaced the ball, you're done. That's it. The nose is now finished. All you got to do is repeat the same steps from front view nose, which are all the blocks in relation to the light. So now that we're done all of this I call it the math of art. Now that we're done all that math of art, now we can actually render it. 
So I'm just going to really quickly keep my, my, my planning lines, my diagram right here. And this is another reminder. Diagrams are the key to deconstructing the flat world in your mind. As soon as you start draw, drawing diagrams, you start thinking in three dimensions. You, 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 it's just easy. So please do more diagrams. Trace over diagrams, everything. Do more diagrams because it'll change the way you think about everything. Trace over diagrams are when you get a photo and you just draw over it. You reduce the opacity and you draw over it and it just explodes your mind. I mean, your, your brain loves that stuff. It craves it. Um, and that's what you have to start doing if you find yourself being very, very limited in the three-dimensional, the artificial three-dimension. So on top of this plan, now I'm going to just draw the very, very simple structure that we had before, which is I'm just going to try to make sense of the structure of the nose from the side. Right, so drawing a very, very simple structure to the nose. All right, so this three-dimensional object is just in relation to the math that I drew under there. You could change that to be however you want. It can be any type of nose you want. It doesn't matter. You can make it a nose that sticks out. You can make it a nose that droops down. This overlap structure that represents the edges of the polygon or the form study that sits on top of the math of art um, now can take character. We're slowly again, once again, um, moving from object to subject. Object is turning back into subject. So I'm going to also place in that little ball to help me understand where everything is pointed. Female noses usually point upwards, male noses usually point down. Um, so these are the kinds of things you want to keep an eye out for, characterization, all of that. You start to invest that stuff here. Not on, this, not on these lines, the substructure lines, but somewhere out here on the polygonal level. So I'm going to also, just like I did before, so what, what from front view, it's really important to remember front view. So from front view, I drew the ball, drew the two nostrils, and just drew a, a quick little outline for myself for where the nose will be. And then I started blocking. So this is exactly the same. I'm going to draw a quick little ball shape. I'm going to draw where the side of the nostril is, where the septum is, and maybe the other nostril in the back. There are different types of three-quarter view noses. There are some that are barely rotated. There are some where the ball has completely gone over the edge. So this is the three-quarter view substructure, right? The ball is like all the way out here. It's still a three-quarter view nose, but we don't see any of the other nostril at all. So remember, there's different degrees of rotation for the nose and each time the tip of the nose gets further and further from the nostril until it is finally side view and that is the furthest it'll be from the nostril. Okay, so edge to edge is the furthest it'll be from the nostril. So I know it gets, it gets really complicated. Some people can draw a front view face beautifully and in my private classes it's just exactly the same thing. And then I assign them homework to draw a nose from three-quarter view or draw a face in three-quarter view. And um, it's just like they can't, they can't quantify. All the skill they thought they knew goes out the window. There are four quarters to the face, from my understanding at least. One, two, three, four. If you cut the face in half and then cut a line down from the eyebrow arc or the temple line down, then you've got cheekbones, and then you've got chin, ears. In three-quarter view, only three of these quarters are missing. Uh, sorry, only three of these quarters are visible. The far quarter is not visible. And so that's why it's called three-quarter view. Um, so in the nose, there's no uh, equivalent to that. I mean, we do see one, two, three, but sometimes we see the fourth quarter. So three-quarter view is a very general that word, term, uh, um, uh, like, you know, label for what is actually happening um, on the face level, okay? So, um, uh, so 
I'm just now going to lay in the midtones, and then just like before, I'm, I'm going to just get rid of my substructure lines, and I'm just going to lay down the quickest midtones I can find. So first, I'm just going to put in a skin midtone for the face. You can't really study a face or do a study of a feature without a midtone. You, you kind of have to do. If you want to do a study of a feature, you have to lay down a midtone. It's it's really important for understanding blocks. And then I'm going to lay down a block this way for this line. And then making sure that that lower part of the nose, this whole area kind of just gets shifted around, but it's general. This lower part of the nose area here gets shadow. The top side gets brights. And the side view gets something that's darker than the front of the face, mid-tone, so the cheeks, but definitely lighter than the shadow of the nose. I'm going to reduce my lines a little bit. And then I'm going to either merge them down or keep them. It's really up to you what you feel most comfortable with. And I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to block in the nose. And I'm going to block in the far nostril, which might not be visible. So I'm flipping the canvas. Flipping the canvas is amazing for managing rotation, which might not even be visible. So that's why I'm kind of barely showing it off, hiding behind the ball of the nose. And here is where you can start characterizing. Is it a downturn nose? Is it an upturn nose? It's okay to be messy. And I'm going to try to get the general shape of the nostril and the shape of the septum out. One block for the nostril, one block for the septum. The other septum side and the other nostril might not be visible. Remember, we're seeing everything from the side of the cube. And then I really quickly just going to tie in the two ends, which are either the missing end and the end we see, if we can see some of the missing end, and I'm going to just block in a really, really messy, don't, doesn't have to be clean. Anything you clean up now is pointless because it'll just get messy again. So please be messy in the blocking stage. And I'm just going to really quickly just manage how dark I'm going from certain areas. And I am ready for the removal of the lines. So now that I got rid of the lines, I know I have some pretty strong structure under there. I am pretty, I can see the rotation and I'm pretty confident about the nose. Now all I have to do is just clean up. And again, it's all dependent on the type of nose you're going to draw. So I'm just going to go ahead and render it. For the sides of the nostrils, do not outline them. Do not try to outline the ball of the nose. Do not outline the other side. This mid-tone, once we start growing the highlights of these areas or mid-tone brights uh, or brighter mid-tones, they will become more defined. Do not outline the other side that you don't see. Resist the urge to outline. And then I'm just going to mess around here trying to show the other side this i guess is not that rotated a nose and remember again i remind you there are different degrees of rotation for a nose and then i'm just um brightening the cheeks brightening the sides making sure that the sides of the nose are not too dark and just pretty much preparing my blocks and then I'm also going to try to show how some of that nostril and some of the shadow aren't necessarily touching. And I'm also going to block the sides of the nostrils, which are getting light. And they are helping me build some more edges on that far side. So this leftover line is not a line. It's what was shaped from that far side.
And then now that I have all of that, I'm going to warp this, warping this central shape to become a recognizable nose once again. Remembering not to keep the septum too wide and just slowly turning object back into subject. Keeping the cast shadow symmetrical because the light didn't really change. And just thinking about how much of that far nostril I want to hide. So now I rotated it a little bit more. I made it look more nose-like, just like I did before. And now I'm just going to blend, just like before. Nothing really changed. This is my blending brush. Um, it's a smudge brush, and it's in my smudge pack and my website, which is on sale. And I'm just blending away. Again, resist the urge to blend over, resist the urge to over blend and resist the urge to re-block and resist the urge to add lines and resist the urge to use excessive contrast. There's lots of instinctive urges that come out while you guys are painting without lines and they are out to get you. Areas I didn't blend right here, right here, the overlap edge of the nostril. So look at, I'm just completely getting rid of the nostril as well. You can also get rid of the far nostril. Again, there's, there's hard to do a three quarter view tutorial without showing every degree of the three quarter view. So remember we can do an overlap like this or we can do one where the other nostril is visible, but both have an overlap, meaning that there is this really, really sharp edge on the outside. It just depends on the kind of rotation. Sometimes the rotation is really intense. Sometimes it's straight up side view. Do you guys see that? But altogether, the, the, the nostril that's closest to the uh, camera usually does um, stay the, the same most of the time. So because now that we're getting into blending, because we rotated the nose, we can now see the side of the septum, not just the front of the septum. So this little septum droop, which droops in the nose, kind of works its way back up into the nostril. Different types of noses do different things. Again, this is a very general nose tutorial. Correcting this edge, I'm sharpening this edge right here. I have to sharpen this edge because that again is an overlap edge. One object is in front of the other. And I'm just blending out that nostril. Remember the radial shading, I'm blending it out downward. Continuing the blending, making sure I'm not blending this away. I'm not blending this away. These are overlap edges. Okay, and then I'm letting this little area right here also kind of create kind of an edge. And then same thing on the other side. I'm just deciding what I'm keeping. I do not want to keep this far nostril, but I want to keep some of its general presence and shadow. Remember, this is an extreme three-quarter view because I want to show some of the other nostrils. I think this one is the most difficult one. It's easy to cut out that nostril and just let it be, but I want to show the one where some of the other nostril is visible. And so this is where that tip of the nose would be. So that means just a little bit of brightness on that far side out there. Then I'm going to place in a block for the bounce light. The upper lip throws off a lot of light. It's like a big reflector. So the upper lip meaning that it's the upper upper lip, not the upper lip itself, the upper upper lip where the mustache is. And then again I'm just laying down that bounce light right there. Okay, sometimes there's a little bit of septum cartilage working its way up into the nose. It really just depends on the reference you, you're using. When it comes to complex rotation, like your quarter view, always use a reference. And I'm going to cut off the cast shadow to be behind or after or before, whichever way you're looking at it, the edge 
the theoretical, let's say, edge of the far nostril because it shouldn't be connected right at, we are looking at things stacking on a horizon plane. And we're always keeping an eye out for the symmetry line. The symmetry of the nose did not change. What changed is the camera angle. Remember that. And so I'm just going to get, uh, uh, I'm trying to keep the steps as little as possible. I'm just going to get blur tool on Gaussian blur and blur out that cast shadow because a cast shadow looks better when it's blurred. A cast shadow does not look good, especially the nose shadow that you guys love to do, but you love to keep it the only dark, sharp shadow in the whole face. Everything else is diffused. Remember that the nose shadow is also diffused and blurred. And I'm just adding a little bit of that bounce light. Sometimes the side view, the three quarter view of the nose reveals bumps on the nose. Again, this is like a perfect nose, so there's different types. Sometimes there's a little bit of extra bump there. And then now you're rebuilding out the highlight of the nostril. Do not outline. I can see why you guys outline because this now looks like an outline. But remember, this value is a midtone. It looks nothing like this. Grabbing this value and using it up here is like a sin. It's like a cardinal sin. It's blasphemy. It's heresy. Don't do it. It's value sharing. You are not allowed to do this. Eh, don't do it. It's this thing that looks like a lineish type shade, wide shade thing, is the leftover of the midtone that we used on the upper part of the nose. And then I'm just, remember that this is a, an example nose, so I'm exaggerating a lot of edges. I'm exaggerating a lot of stuff for you guys, not only to see it from where I'm painting, but also to remember it. So while I paint and while I teach, I exaggerate a lot of stuff so that you guys can actually pick up the changes I'm making. Subtle changes don't make for good class. So I'm going to be pushing or maybe under pushing the contrast. That's something I do a lot as well. So I could, you know, practice what I preach in front of you. So I reduce contrast on purpose because I don't like encouraging contrast and beginner students, which is very destructive for their development. And that's it really for the nose structure contrast. I'll bring in in a second, but this nose edge disappearing should it shouldn't be of no issue to you you will eventually bring in the block of the eye socket. And the block of the eye socket will do a lot of work to reinstate some contrast in this area. Do not be tempted into bringing in a shadow that kind of seeps its way down here. Don't do that because that's how you're gonna kill the form. Um, so remember that there will be a cast shadow here from the eye socket that's like spreads a little bit giving you some definition in this general top area but this is a trust it's a trust game what is that thing a, a trust test what is that when you fall on someone and they got their arms out for you trust fall this whole study of forms and using only mid-tones and edges is like a trust fall um and you have to believe that the arms will catch you uh, so don't have a crazy reaction and start freaking out and not trusting the edges and the midtones. You have to believe the edges will come through. You have to believe that all of this stuff that you're laying down at the moment is, is going to pay off. Um, I think that's a thing that has to do with like more than art. Uh, it just, it has to do with, first of all, it has to do with art as a whole because, oh, my study is even going to do anything, you know, like, is, am I going to get better? Am I ever going to get to where I want to be? Like that alone is as trustful, you know, you're really trusting the process, but it, it goes into everything else in the world, you know, trusting each other, all of that. You just have to have a little faith in the process. I use no lines. I use no edges. Remember that the nose should not be a focal point. So if you find yourself treating the nose like a focal point, if this nose tutorial, if you feel like the result is just a bit too undefined, um, it should not be defined. It's a nose. So it's not the eyes. The eyes will be there. The nose is a supporting character. It's a supporting uh, actor. Um, it's not there to be the star. 
Uh, so it's just supposed to exist in this world of edges and midtones that don't really disrupt each other. So right here, let's talk about the side of the nostril. The side of the nostril has a bit, let's, let's just talk about where the rules are broken um, in nature. It has a bit of a, a crease. And so sometimes you are allowed to bring in this, but this is why I'm being so cautious. I'm even whispering it. You have to be very careful not to turn this into a line because it's supposed to be this bit where a bunch of shadow is forming. Because if we zoomed in, the nostril is like doing like a little bend and the skin is coming out this way. It's like a butt crack. Do you see that? So it does a little bit of a bend inward. The nostril does not melt into the nose on a slide. It's not sliding down. It does a little bloop and then it goes back out. So let me show you again. It does that. So that means that the slight rotation could possibly, maybe, not maybe, who knows, might, in a reference you might see it, add a little bit of a shadow on the outside that might be a line. Okay, but that doesn't mean you can go ahead and start outlining all of your, um, like your, your stuff, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, bring in the contrast very, very carefully. Um, let me get rid of that line real quick. Um, so this line right here, sorry, I'm gonna bring in the contrast. So that means I'm going full black, full, full black on Photoshop, low opacity, like 6%, 9%. And I'm laying down my first brush stroke, second brush stroke, third brush stroke. And the deeper I go into the nose, the smaller my brush gets, but automatically the darker the nose gets in this really nice auto blended way. Did you guys catch that? And that's how you bring in that contrast in that area. Let me run you through the brush strokes again. So new layer, first brush stroke, you can barely see it. Second, third, we're shrinking, we're going closer to the edge, and then we are deleting along the edge, preserving, again, deleting along the edge, preserving the edge, okay? And then you get a whole bunch of contrast in a really safe way. And uh, I'm just gonna flip the canvas. Flipping the canvas helps you understand the rotation helps you see where your mistakes might be. So because this edge here is nice and sharp, we don't need any more edges here because this is how the contour looks from the side of the nose. Slides, slides, it slides like that, but then it starts to pinch. Pinch, sorry about the bad lines. Pinch. So it does a pinch here, a slide here, meaning you can blend here, you can't blend here. All right, so I'm just doing that. That's all I'm doing. I'm blending in the bridge with the rest of the face, but I'm not blending in the sides of the nostril. In fact, if you don't feel comfortable adding an, a line there, I don't feel comfortable with you adding a line there, I'm just going to add a further sharpness and stronger sharpness along the edge of the nose. I'm just gonna use my blocker. All the brushes I use are available in my store and that way you can get exactly what I'm doing. If you feel like, hey, maybe her brushes are doing the work for her, they're really not. You guys have access to all the materials I use, except Photoshop, I don't sell Photoshop. <laughs> Um, and then I'm just, again, see this presence, this little shadow? If we got rid of it, the nose would look weird. But if we, and if we have it, it's not really there. So we, we need it, but it's also, we barely did anything. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that, like, you, it, like see, it looks weird if we get rid of it. It's something that's missing. Do you see what I'm saying? It looks off. So there's a big reason why I'm keeping that little blob representing the far nostril. Just like that far blob of lips in three quarter view, which is the next tutorial, hopefully this Thursday. Um, you, you have to have some kind of 
placeholder value there to represent that whole jumbling of this exact thing is happening on the other side, but we don't see it. And it gives off an aura of shadow. And that's what we're representing with this line. And then because the nose is oily, 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 it's always reflecting things. It's happy when it's oily. Um, it looks weird when it's matte. Uh, so what we want to do is add a little bit of extra shine. That shine is going to address all of that oily nature of the skin of the nose, maybe even connecting the shine of the upper nostril with the shine of the nose. All these upper lip area, these reflectors here, remember upper upper lip, is reflecting light back. Light doesn't just stop, pitch a tent, and just chill. Light bounces everywhere. It bounces a lot. So the light here fell and hit the upper lip, upper nostril area. Light here fell, hit the upper nostril, hit the bottom of the septum. And so I'm just getting that same light value and I'm connecting the two together. That's that bounce light there. Bounce light is a bit more of an advanced topic. But you, you can't do bounce light until you understand core shadows. And you, you have to start doing core shadows. You have to start doing core shadows. You have to start studying spheres. If you want to get better at what you do and you want to get better at realism and you want to render full scale illustrations and splashes, you have to start studying cubes and spheres. That's it. There's no way around it. There's no shortcut. There's no magic tutorial. There's no dodge tool to save you from that. You have to know where shadows go. Um, and so now I'm just going to blend all this area out. And I'm just blending all this out, blending away the things that don't really translate into an edge anatomically. The nose is a bit bright, but again, it's just, it's just um, me kind of teaching. It's me uh, showcasing these fundamentals in place. So I have to kind of exaggerate contrast a little bit, but don't be like that. Make sure you know the tones that you're working with. You don't, you're not lecturing in, you know, for an hour on um, complex subjects, so you, you can take your time. I'm going to add a little extra shadow under the septum. And a little bit of extra shadow under the nostril. The more you look at a nose, the weirder it gets, because like, what the heck is that thing? Um, so it, remember, it's not supposed to be this super, super outlined, overly detailed, overworked thing. And I'm adding the highlight. The very tip of the nose has a highlight. And you, can, you don't have to blend out this highlight because the, the flaws of the face are visible in highlights. You don't have to fully blend it out. But just because I want to show you where these highlights go, I'm exaggerating just a little. Sometimes the highlight of the nose can spare you that edge and keep the nose from melting into the face. But the nose bridge should not be overdefined and too separate from the face, okay? And that's how you render a nose from three-quarter view. This is not the only rotation angle. This is not the only angle of rotation. There's like a hundred of them. Uh, like, you know, if we could just split them up into keyframes, there's barely rotated, fully rotated, a side view. Um, it's It's... It's a lot of different angles to study, so make sure you're studying them all. I'm going to add my own little characterizations, like a little excess in the septum at the top, uh, where it leads down into the septum. And I'm going to add the other eye socket, just so I can see whether or not I screwed up my symmetry. Remember, the other eye socket doesn't start here. That makes no sense. If it's a you know a prettier face, the edge of the nostril is usually where the eye socket proper is, and then we're matching it on the other side. Remember that three-quarter view, the original triangle I drew, remember that? Remember that? It doesn't skew in perspective. It doesn't do that. It's the only compression is on the width. That's it, so where is the line? Okay, so remember these two guys? The only compression is on the width. There is no compression in the height. So what does that mean? It means that we only compressed, imagine a rectangle, 
you grabbed half of it. You only compressed it on the width. Now the rectangle looks like that. You didn't compress it height, height and width. You, you didn't do something like this, right? That's a perspective shift. That's if the camera is right close to the eyeball and the nose is right there and then someone's doing like a fisheye lens. And then we have compression at that level, which is great for people who are animating, cartooning, all of that. Okay, so remember, when we compress the nose from this to this, we did it only on the width. We did not touch the length or the height. All right, so I'm closing that up. And, um, all right, okay. And then I'm just going to place in a general idea of where the eye socket will be. <clears throat> How would an old nose differ? Beautiful question. An old nose differs like this. Gravity hates us. And so what it does is that it drags everything down. And so we no longer see certain things the way we used to, especially for the female nose. Also, the nose doesn't stop growing. Yay! Yay aging! Yay being human! So it kind of does a little thing like that. And it kind of bulges out. And some of your bone structure around your nose also doesn't stop it growing. And so it does a little bit of a droopy droop. Okay? That's what happens when you age. And the basically the new highlights, you have less definition in certain areas, you have more definition in certain areas, and also you have lines everywhere. So that all adds up and makes the nose look a lot less young. Okay? The dip in there from the side view, the glabella there that doesn't really have a lot of shadow, but it definitely does not have the same light as the bridge and the forehead. So the bridge has this um, bright value. And let's say, okay, so let's say this is the forehead, right? The forehead has a big old value. It looks very wrong to do this, right? It looks weird. It looks like it's it doesn't work. But this also looks too dark. So you just have to remember the nose is now, just like the upper lip, it's bouncing light back up. So as long as it's relative to the shine you're adding on the nose uh, bridge, it's, it's relatively darker than both the forehead and the nose. So you get this like very, very slight value drop, but it's definitely detectable. So let's recap really quickly. We found the structure of the front view nose and we compressed it to look like a three quarter view nose. And when we compressed it, we compressed on a width level. Do you guys see that? So this is the three quarter view overlaid on top of the side view. This is the front view overlaid on top of the three quarter view. Do you see that bit of pinching here, but only in the width? And then we offset the sphere or that little ball of the tip of the nose, which sticks out furthest to the camera. That's the main structure you have to make sure you have. And then everything else was just blocking. So if we recap really quickly, you guys saw a lot of blocking. So basically I built the, the three-dimensional object first, built the block that is on top of that native structure under the nose, which is that triangle and the offset sphere. So we took care of the rotation on another layer. We, we, we took care of the rotation on the native shapes already so that the blocking shape that we added here is already it already has an established rotation. And then we basically drew in all of that structure. We blocked in the majority of the main blocks according to the light source. So what the light does see and what the light doesn't see. Then we turned off the lines, added in some basic blocks to represent the vicinity of general areas of depth and height. 
So two nostrils, the nostril hole, the bridge of the nose, creating really, really uh, uh, reliable edges. I know the nose flip might be causing a bit of a confusion. Continuing the blocking, and then I liquefied and changed the structure of the nose. So it's just more nose, object to subject. That stage is really important because that's how you get the human back in human and the human back in anatomy. And then I'm blending out the nostrils. I'm blending out some of my blocks, preserving some of my edges. I blurred the, the cast shadow. I added some changes in the surface area like the nostril and the bump of the nose. I added in the cast shadow of the eye socket or the core shadow of the eye socket. I strengthened the contrast of the nostril, added the bounce light, added last little last minute kind of highlights, blended those out. We slowly build up the contrast. We slowly build up the highlight. We never, ever, ever rush in. Added a bit of the Cupid's bow. And that's it. Okay, guys. So I do want to do a quick little critique on this one right here. And I just want to show you how quickly it reads. So for this nostril, um, there's more than one mistake in this piece. Um, so you do have a nice side view edge right here. Good job on this edge. That's a great edge. But you're outlining your highlight. Now that you guys watch this tutorial, do you see how the line is always ever present. You can just replace that completely with a nice block, right? Do not outline to replace a block. A block is a whole structure. An outline is a flimsy little string. It cannot possibly replace the structure. So I'm just re-blocking this whole nose area, making sure I have that shadow of the substructure and making sure that shadow is representing the rotation, meaning one side of the triangle of the under part of the nose is rotated, meaning it's like longer on one side and shorter on the other. All right, so lots of lots of value sharing. I believe they're trying to paint a darker skinned character, so I'll, I'll try to stay true to that. What all you gotta do is reduce mid-tones, but preserve edges. Edges don't change just because you're drawing a darker skin character. And I believe this shadow is a little bit too um, dark, so I'm just going to lighten that. And then I'm going to add that strong block for the nostrils. I don't have a reference for the specific race or ethnicity of this nose, so I'm just using general template visual library nose. Adding a little bit of a shadow right under that nostril, a little bit of the shadow under the septum. And then I'm going to blend out some of these areas. I'm going to make sure I raise that shadow on the side of the nose. Does not need to be that dark to read as a nose. The same value you use for the cheek on one side you use on the other side. It's okay if the nose disappears, as long as you keep this edge right here nice and sharp, this overlap edge. I'm gonna get rid of this line. All right, and it kind of disappears into the background. So the, really the first mistake you made was having the background dark as well. Just because your character's skin is dark doesn't mean your background has to be dark. Uh, this is going to be insane trying to lasso this. It's it's not even possible to lasso it with the magic wand. I, I'd have to like manually do that, um, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to enlarge the nose to match because the outline I started with is a little bit off. I'm going to enlarge the nose to match the face. It's just a bit dainty. And then I'm going to push in the bridge of the nose since it feels like it's a feminine nose. So I'm just going to make it generally smaller. Male hormone structure looks very different and is immediately visible on the face. Um, because that's where it, you know, men start packing that ex extreme amount of density in the bone structure. It's really visible around the nose, the brow bone, the glabella, um, the jawline. 
I'm going to blend out here. I'm going to blend out here. And I'm going to blend out here. You're blending at different degrees in different areas, so don't overblend certain areas. And then I'm going to, so don't overblend the core shadow. You can overblend the sliding of the nose bridge. I'm going to blend the nostril out with very little effort. We get an, an, a side view that actually reads. And I'm going to sharpen this edge right here. And I'm going to block in the structure of that nostril, which may be catching some light. Remember, the general value of the nostrils are the same values as the bridge of the nose. They're still attached to the side of the nose. Different noses have different structures, though, okay? So it's all a question of what's happening in the anatomy, in the character, in the characterization. And then I'm just adding that bounce light I mentioned before and a little bounce light there. So next up is the cast shadow. I don't like a cast shadow that's too dark because it means that the upper lip isn't doing its job, which is not possible. The upper upper lip, um, which is the lower nose area, the cupid's bow area, that is catching a lot of light and diffusing the cast shadow that falls on it. And if blocking straight like rendering is too difficult for you, you can outline areas as long as you know how to replace the line. You can draw out the whole face as long as you know how to replace a line. A line is the simplest. Imagine this is a line. A line is the simple designation for where a future edge will go. That's it. And then sometimes um, the approach of that edge can recede into a value. Um, it can have a bit of a gradient. There's, there's all kinds of ways these two surfaces don't connect. And sometimes it's as simple as just an angle, an angle change. Okay, so really, really quick changes, but they're reliable. It's, it's a really, really reliable method because it has an immediate read. So having that reliable method in your mind and then also working with reference, you, you become unstoppable. So obviously the before and after is going to be very, very different. But I will show it to you anyway because the before was just, it was hardly painted. It wasn't even complete. Um, so before, after. Um, lots and lots of structural changes. Um, and they, they results, the result is immediate read. It was like a 10 minute critique. You guys can do this. Um, it's not magic. It's, there's no, I know it's called a magic wand, but there's no magic involved. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's it. That's how to paint a nose. Uh, learn your geometry, get accustomed to trusting the edge and trusting the midtone and everything will start making sense in your art. And, and you'll just be able to render things so easily without reference that when it's time to use reference, it's just really, really easy. Oh, before I go, I did want to show you one thing. Thank God I remembered. Um, if the nose isn't that rotated, this nose works. All you really got to do is just extend. So find the symmetry, extend the other nostril out and fill it in. It's still barely there though. It's still kind of just barely holding on. And you still have to show how it's a an edge. And you just have to extend the cast shadow there. Okay? So it just depends on the type of nose. I personally think that that's a bit too much, but that's okay. And then I'm just blending it out. But I just, I just want to exaggerate it so that you guys can see. And again, all you have to do is just blend out some of these areas, making sure your core shadow is intact and your other highlighter is present for the other nostril on the other side. Okay, so it's not hard adding in a little bit of extra anatomy to represent a, a more uh, a subtle three-quarter view, where the, the three-quarter view we had before this was a little less subtle. We didn't see the other nostril at all. Then there's the one where we can see both nostrils and one nostril is completely, um, you know, uh, 
shrunken widthwise, not lengthwise. And the other is, um, so remember everything stays on the same length, it's just the width that changes. Um, and the other is much longer. So it, remember there's, it's hard to do a three quarter nose video because that's why I avoid it because there's just so many. But as long as you guys remember the key thing I showed you today, which was the rotation is, is squished on the width for the far nostril and extended on the width with the close up nostril closer to the camera. Okay, so I am tired and my voice hurts. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming here. If you want to submit your work for critique, all you have to do is go to istabrak.com and you can submit your work for critique by clicking on the subreddit icon right here. If you learned something today and want to give back, I'd really appreciate you guys joining me on Patreon as $1 a month watchers. That's just a dollar a month and it goes a long way to keeping all these reels free and accessible to everyone. So please join me on Patreon for a dollar. My... Gumroad uh, Masterclass and everything on my store, including the brushes you saw me use today, are all on sale. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next class on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, guys.